everybody, Jenna here with Queen of Diamonds. Thank you for joining me. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. So today my setup is a little bit different. In fact, I am recording from home today. I usually record at my mom and dad's house because it's quiet and the lighting is better. And I don't have animals intruding with my recording. So today I'm giving it a shot here at my house and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully everyone will cooperate as far as the animals go. My children are out of the house for the day. So it's nice and quiet and I thought it might be a good time to record. So um, today I am doing something a little different than my normal videos. I am doing a, it's gonna be an unboxing of this cute little diamond painting here that I got from Amazon. I'll get into that in a minute. But after I unbox it, I thought I'd do a kit up video. So kitting up is where you're putting all of your diamonds into their containers and you're preparing to do your diamond painting. So <clears throat> I thought I'm gonna give that a chance, give that a shot and we'll see how it goes. So anyway, um, thanks for joining me. Let's get into the unboxing. This is our diamond painting and this is how a Diamond Art Club diamond painting will come. It's in a box and on the front, it shows that it's round and it gives you a little thumbnail of the diamond painting and tells the size and the artist. Now this uh, Amazon diamond painting came with the sticker on it and it says new. So I don't know if this is a newer one. I've been looking at the Amazon Diamond Art Club kits for quite a while and they do have some newer ones. I have never seen this one though. So anyway, I just thought it was a really cute um, painting to do for a demonstration on kitting up because it's a smaller one. So the size on this is 22.7 centimeters by 22.7 centimeters. It is a round, you can see that right there. The artist is Linda Woods. And on the side of the box, you've got the branding. On this side, you've got the branding and a QR code for unlock 10% off. On the back, you've got some how-to instructions and kit contents. And then on this side, you've just got the branding again. You can hear my cat in the background, I apologize. My 18 year old has a cat um, named Toby and he is very codependent on her and he has separation anxiety when she's gone. <laughs> so she's out of the house for the day and he is not liking that. Okay, so let's just take this plastic off and we'll get into this box. I don't know what to expect from a little kit this small. I did get a little diamonds kit last month that I showed on my month review that was smaller as well, but it was a little diamonds, um, uh, part of their little diamonds line, so the packaging was different. This is the normal Diamond Art Club packaging. It's just in a smaller form, so it's kind of cute. So inside here we've got a toolkit and your sticker pink rose. It tells the artist's name and the size. I like to put those stickers in my diamond painting log book. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. That's what I love about diamond painting. It's just you do you. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Okay, so in this box we've got a warranty and insurance card and this QR code is to visit the diamondartclub.com. Oh, this is about your warranty. So that's nice. Before we get into the canvas, let's take a look in our um, toolkit. So this is a different toolkit that what come, than what comes in their bigger boxes. Their bigger boxes have the yellow toolkit, but it looks like it's a little similar. Let's see what we've got here. This is very much like the diamond dots, or little, sorry, little diamonds that I ordered. Um, same kind of toolkit. Their Ziploc bags don't come in a like a container to hold them. The other ones all come together in a Ziploc bag so they're contained. But that's okay. I like getting the Ziploc baggies because I use these for overflow of the diamonds. I don't prefer using these for diamond painting. You can do it. I just don't love working with the Ziploc bags. A lot of people really love them though so it's a preference. Um, here's the tray that comes with the diamond painting. It's got a funnel, so it can go right into your, it pours the diamonds right into your containers. I like the trays that have funnels. Hi, Toby. Looks like Toby's gonna make an appearance. So if you see some little ears or paws in frame, can't be helped. <laughs> and so here are the two little wax pads that come, 
come in at top, you don't play with it, that come with the toolkit. I'm gonna put these things back in the bag because Toby's gonna play with the Ziploc baggies. Of course, you know, it's plastic and it's little. The cats are drawn to that. Here is the pen that comes with the kit. And today I got blue. It also comes with a comfort grip. I call them squishies that you just slide onto the pen and it gives your fingers some cushion while you're diamond painting. And you usually get a four and a seven placer unless I lost the seven placer. I think this only came with a four placer which is generally what I use. I've been trying to use the seven placer a little bit more. I'm not real super great at multi-placing in color blocking sections. I'm learning, but um, it's a, you just have to get used to it, I suppose. I forgot to put all the rest of this stuff in there. I got distracted looking at the kitty who is very curious about everything I'm doing right now. Oh, and I'm gonna drop things. Okay, we'll just slide everything back in the toolkit and we'll take a look at our canvas. So Diamond Art Club canvases always come in a plastic sleeve to keep them free of dust and debris. I'm gonna bring you up just a little bit so you can get a better look at this canvas. And then I'll bring you back down again. plastic sleeve off and let's unroll this little canvas it's so small it's cute okay so here's our canvas we'll take a look at that in just a minute it's not going to want to lay flat diamond art club canvases have a material that you can um well it's poured glue which is part of the reason that this works but other canvases i can't really get to do this but you can usually roll them backwards with diamond art club and it flattens out a little bit. And I'll show you another trick for getting them flat too. I just kind of like to kind of give it a little love. There we go. That's the bigger canvases flatten out a little better than this, but let's take a look here. We've got 23 colors and it looks like one, two, three ABs. How pretty. So that's a cute little flower. It's a very simple image, but I love it. So up here they've got their branding. You've got your two legends on both sides. Here's a little thumbnail again of the diamond painting and the title is Pink Rose, nine inches by nine inches, 22.7 centimeters by 22.7 centimeters. Artist is Linda Woods and it's Diamond Art Club. Here it shows Diamond Art Club's social information and their lifetime warranty. So that is the canvas. And I just want to take a look. We'll, we'll look at where the specialty drills are going to be when I undo the drills. So here's the sticker sheet. And you've got a, oh, there's a little drill that came out of nowhere. Um, that will be there for a minute. Okay. So Diamond Art Club sends pre-cut stickers so that you can label your uh, containers. And I'll show you that when we start kitting up. It's very nice. Um, here's the title and the artist again. You've got a start and end date here. I like to keep these um, just because my diamond painting journal is not always handy. If you are not keeping track of the start and end dates, you don't. it's not something you have to do. Again, diamond painting is a you do you hobby. Um, this tells about the diamond painting like we've already seen on the canvas, so that's nice. You also get some blank stickers over here from Diamond Art Club on all of their sticker sheets. I've never really used the blank ones, but it's nice that they include some blank ones in case you need them. So put that off to the side and here is a pamphlet. Okay, so this is just a smaller version of the pamphlet that comes with the bigger diamond paintings. So you've got step-by-step -step instructions, thank you for your purchase, tips and tricks, and uh, thank you code for 10% off your next purchase and more information about the Diamond Art Club website. And then on the back, you've just got more social information. So we'll put that over there. And here are our diamonds. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just gonna look at these colors. Those are pretty. I'm not gonna go through every color like a unboxing, but I just do wanna point out their ABs. So we've got, let me bring you down a little bit. 
Okay, we've got 141 as a white AB. That is really pretty. Let me see if I can get my camera to focus a little bit. You can see that sparkle. So AB stands for Aurora Borealis, and it is a name given from like the Northern Lights. It just adds a little extra sparkle. Hi kitties. It just adds a little extra sparkle to your diamond painting. Oh, hey, we don't need to fight. <sighs> Fighting kitties. So here's 128, and that is like a peachy color. Oh, that is really pretty. And then here's the third AB. So that's a pretty pink, like a bubblegum pink. Really pretty. Just show you the rest of the colors quickly. It's so funny to see a diamond painting that doesn't have a lot of a lot of drills in the bags, but it is a smaller scale, so. Of course, the diamond paintings are on a smaller scale too. We do have quite a bit of that 165 and 604. These are more full, I guess. Oh, it does have a fairy dust diamond. It has two fairy dust diamonds. I did not even notice that. I apologize, you guys. So we've got a blue fairy dust diamond. Oh, that's like a bonus. I didn't even realize I was getting some fairy dust diamonds. So fairy dust diamonds are another specialty drill. And they have a glittery, sorry, they have a glittery effect also, but the glittery effect on the fairy dust diamonds is a little more subtle than the effect that the ABs have. The ABs have a very, very distinct glitter on them, which is really pretty. And the fairy dust diamonds have a glitter layer on them, but it's just a more subtle glitter. But both when used on your diamond paintings are really beautiful accents. I'm really, I love both of those. I can't tell you guys which one I prefer because I really like both. So there are colors and I will be right back with you and we will start kitting up. I'm back. I had to throw away some of the garbage to keep this area a little clean because my cats have just taken total interest in this. It's like they want to star on this video. So um, I have two of them perched right by me kind of watching everything I do. <laughs> They'll probably start playing with things. Um, anyway, so I wanted to get some of the garbage out of the way. Um, so for this kit, I'm using an older kitting method that I haven't used <clears throat> for quite a while. When I got into diamond painting about three years ago, I hadn't ordered any storage kits online on Amazon. So I just went to my local craft store and they had these and I like this screw on tops. I don't know. I just have a tendency to really like those. I do have Elizabeth Ward storage containers that I love. It's just they're all kitted up for kits that I have finished the diamond paintings and I've just been too lazy or busy to kit down. So kitting down is the opposite of kitting up. You're taking everything out um, of your storage containers and Toby, don't play with that, bud. You're taking everything out of your storage containers and getting the storage containers prepared for a new kit. So I just haven't, time has not permitted me to sit down and uh, kit down all of those diamond paintings that I have finished. So today we are going with um, a kit that I haven't used for a very long time. And these were just, like I said, at a local craft store. I can't even find them anymore. I really like them. They're smaller and fatter than the bottles I normally use, but they can put, you can put a lot of diamonds in these. So anyway, that's what we'll be using today, but you can virtually use any kind of storage method that you want. I have the Tic Tac boxes and those are great, but I just, for this kit, I just decided to go with these. So. What we're going to do is just start putting our diamonds into these containers. I'm going to move the canvas for now. Let me find a safe place for the cats while I play with it. And <clears throat> we'll just start doing this. Now, I usually like to use a tray under my storage bottles in case the diamonds fall out so that they are caught in a section because if your diamonds fall onto the counter or table, whatever you're using, they'll bounce. So let me grab a tray. So I'm going to be using this tray from Bella Art Dana Cole. This is her Max 3.1 tray and I really like it. Um, sorry, there's some stuff stuck in there. I I ordered it not really knowing what to expect from a Mac size. I'm just, I've been experimenting with um, different size trays and different companies and things. And so when I ordered this, I did not know how big it was going to be, but it's great when you're doing color blocking. It is a great tray to have on hand and it's coming in handy today for this part of kitting up. So, plus it has a really beautiful, colorful butterfly that's kind of, it's like a, 3D print that's raised so it's not flush with the with the lid. 
anyway, kind of cool. So let's come down a little bit. Okay. So kitting up videos are kind of a thing in the diamond painting community I have found and I like them because they're very, um, you can learn a lot by watching different people use different techniques for kitting up. And it's just like a kitten chat. And so what you do is it's, if you've heard of whip and chat, it's kind of similar to a whip and chat. And so I just thought that I would take some time to show you how I kit up. And honestly, it's just one of those things that you just have to, this has a lot of static in it. So these drills are not going to want to cooperate. I have pre-cut dryer sheets um, for this very reason because lately all of my kits from every company have had a lot of static. And it's just a little maddening. If you've worked with drills that have static, you know it's just kind of one of those things. They just stick to everything. Um, I did a kit last month. What kit was it? Oh, it was my paint gem kit. And the drills were just bouncing all over the place when I opened the baggies. Oh my gosh, I didn't even have time to get the dryer sheets in the baggie. And the drills were just flying all over. It was bad. Um, I've heard so many different theories about static and I just don't know what I believe. I think it's a combination of different things, but I've heard anything from it's the environment you're in, it's the environment they were packaged in, like a manufacturing issue. I don't know, you guys. <clears throat> I just know this winter I have had so much trouble with um, static in any company that I use. So static can be kind of a, it can make kitting up kind of a longer process because look, I've got drills stuck to my fingers, <laughs> but at least they're not jumping so far. We'll see how it goes. They are sticking to me. Um, so the nice thing about using a tray under your, and then I'll just leave that dryer sheet in there. And usually after I'm done kitting up, the static has worked itself out and is no longer in your container. So anyway, the nice thing about using a tray, especially a tray with a funnel on it, is because you can just Theor theoretically <clears throat> dump your diamonds into the container after. So there's our first color. Now I forgot to label this container before I cut it out. I usually do that um, first. So let me get on track here. 605. So on our labels we look for the DMC number 605 because that's what's on our bag. And 605 in this case is going to be drill number 11 or color number 11. And we're going to take that label off and stick it right on our container. So there's our number 11605. So I'm not really doing these in order I should be because I normally um, I normally do them in in numeric order. So maybe that's what I'll do. <laughs> I'm just kind of a little distracted by the cats today and hoping that they don't cause too much havoc, but they probably will. It's all, you know, they're drawn, if you have pet cats, they're drawn to plastic and little things that they hear pouring. They love that too, so, you know, it's part of being a cat parent. It's like toddlers that are just curious about everything you're doing. And Salem is our big black cat and he is just sitting here intensely focused on everything I'm doing. And Salem will usually sit and watch and then all of a sudden just grab out of the blue. He's funny that way. Cats, you know, they always have their unique personalities and um, Salem is by far our most aggressive. And he's not mean aggressive. He's just like he wants your attention and he'll be aggressive if I'm diamond painting, especially in the evenings, like late at night after everyone's gone to bed. <laughs> He'll come in and tap me on my leg or my arm, whatever he can get to. And he's just kind of letting me know that, hey, I need some attention or some love. It's funny. Cats are fun. Having three of them is entertaining for sure. And a dog. I'm a big um, 
animal lover. So I get suckered into animals quite easily. And my kids know that it's been a real problem. So as I go, I like to put the garbage into this plastic sleeve that all the drills came in. I guess that's not a sleeve, but I think of it as a sleeve because it's folded up like a, more like an envelope, I guess. Um, I'm gonna put, so this is normally how I kit up when I'm actually focused on kitting up and not distracted. Uh, I usually put all of the 100s together. Sorry, let me just, this is um, also not my normal setup for kitting up, but let me move that out of the way for a moment. So I put all the 3000s together, 100s, 300s, etc. <clears throat> because Diamond Art Club puts their DMC numbers in order, numeric order on their sheet, it just kind of makes it easy if you have all of your colors um, in the hundred piles because then you don't have to sort through so many to get to the one you need. And I'm hoping that I am staying in frame for the most part. So seven hundreds. So how is the weather where all of you are at? So I'm really curious if anyone else is getting <clears throat> this kind of tease of Mother Nature where one day it's really warm and beautiful and the next day it's snowing. Uh, we actually, today was a beautiful morning. I don't even know what happened, but it was kind of pretty outside this morning. I opened my blinds in my bedroom and thought, oh, it's going to be a pretty day. And then uh, the next time I looked out the window after I had completed some tasks for the day, it was a blizzard. So, kind of funny how it works in the spring that way. And then I just go through my piles and put them in numeric order by the, in the pile that they belong in. I'm finding a lot of stray diamonds. I don't, I don't normally have that problem with diamond art club, but I don't know if this is an older kit or a newer one. I, I just have never seen this diamond thing before. I thought it was so cute. I actually had another one in mind for a kitting up video, but this one works out really well because it's just small and cute. Okay. 934, 915, 600. All right, I think we've got these ready to go. So now I'm just going to put my colors off to the side, and this is where I think Salem will start grabbing piles of colors. We'll see. Maybe he gets the vibe that I'm in the middle of something, and he might just not attack, but he is laying. I don't know if you can see him. No, you can't. He is laying very close by. So I've got my dryer sheets here and I have a funnel just in case I need it. Um, with the containers as big as they are, I don't think I'll need it, but I do. I normally do need a funnel when I'm using the smaller bottles. Okay, so let's get this show on the road here. All right, the next color we're gonna do, I'm just gonna start at the beginning, is 113, and that's gonna be our pink AB. Let's stick her there. I am so excited for spring. I love summer, so spring is one of my favorite seasons because I know that summer is next. And I feel like this has been an awfully long winter. I don't think it really has been, but for me it has felt like it has. It's just kind of dragged on and on. Last winter we had a really long winter. We had a heavy winter and this year hasn't been as heavy but I'll tell you what there is nothing quite as beautiful as the summer after a heavy winter that's for sure because the last summer was so beautiful so what kind of summer activities do you all like to do I <clears throat> I love being outdoors when the weather is nice not a big fan of being outdoors when oh shoot when the weather is not nice just tore that sticker a little bit um I generally love being outside in the winter. We, or in the summer, sorry, not in the winter. We used to go camping quite a bit. We went through a spell where we were camping a few years ago. And, oh my gosh, I love it. I miss camping so much. We haven't gone for a, a few years now. And that did not have any static. See how that's funny? Some, some of them will have static and some of them won't. I'm gonna start putting these in the storage box. Okay. All 
Um, but I miss camping. We used to, well, it was called glamping because we would go in a motor home. I'm not really a rough it in the woods type girl, but I would. I mean, I, I haven't for a very long time, <clears throat> but I have roughed it before and really had a good experience. So I just love being outside when it's warm. Um, last year, I had a friend of mine who has some paddle boards and he took the girls and I paddle boarding and that was so fun. And I really, I had not been paddle boarding before. My girls have been, but uh, I had not been paddle boarding. I've been kayaking and of course, um, boating. We used to have a boat and I really loved that. That I, I loved being in the water. I love water. But um, so we went paddle boarding and that was really fun. I really loved paddle boarding and I don't have a paddle board this year. But I think that we are going to spend some time in the water in some form because I, I love being up there. It's fun sometimes just to take your lawn chairs and sit by the water and wade in the water. I love that. So hopefully I'll have the opportunity to take the girls up and just use some floaty devices and go out on the water. That's always fun. But we have a few different bodies of water close to where we live and so it'd be fun to just go up there and play in the water. Love that. We uh we just um my kids have been on spring break this past week and that's been fun. I love a good spring break. The weather has not been great for the spring break but that's okay. We um we went up to Logan on Thursday, and that was a really cute little story. And I, we, anyway, I took two of my girls up there. My oldest couldn't go. She works full time, so she couldn't get time off to go with us up there. But we went up and there was a petting zoo, and we were able to hold baby turtles. That was really fun. And we petted some bunnies. They wouldn't let you hold bunnies. <clears throat> and these, these turtles that we held were called red ear turtles. And you guys, they were the size of quarters. They were so small. I'll see if I can put a picture if you're interested of them in my video. They were just so cute, literally the size of quarters. It kind of made me wonder though, if that was okay for us to be holding them. I mean, they had so many different people hold them and I'm not a huge, you know, I try not to get too far into the extremes of um, what's, you know, I, I don't know. I try to just be in the moment and enjoy things with my kids. And I try not to worry too much about, was well, this healthy for the animals? But the thought crossed my mind. I wonder if being held by all these different um, hands is okay for the little turtles. I know, I know it's silly, but that's what goes through my mind. And I think I've always been that way. I've always just... Is this okay for the animals to be doing this? Anyway, my kids make fun of me for that. But um, So we went up to Logan because the main reason we went up was um, my youngest made a best, best friend that she had not met in person and they had been friends for two years. And so she really has been dying to go up and meet him. And Logan is only about a 45 minute drive. And so it took us about an hour to get there. And uh, anyway, I was in communication with this boy's dad for a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks before we went up. And <clears throat> we wanted to surprise him because they've talked so much about meeting in person and he actually asked her to go to prom. So prom is next, a week from today. And it's really fun because she has never been a very social girl and she's never been a very, she's not into boys. And I just thought, this child will never experience formal dances because she is just not that type. And anyway, so when he asked her to prom, it was kind of perfect because they're such good friends that there's not that romantic awkwardness, you know? And so they're, they're clearly just really good friends and he is such a cute boy. I've talked to him many times. I hear their conversations because they'll be talking while I'm driving or while I'm cooking or whatever, and I, I can hear them talking, and they're just really cute friends. And anyway, 
so we, um, her dad and I felt like, you know, this was a good opportunity for her to meet him. And I got in touch with his dad, like I said, about three weeks ago. And the plan was to surprise him and just show up. So we were going to meet at a mutual place, like a restaurant or something, and just kind of be like, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? You know, but we decided last minute to go straight to their house and have her ring his doorbell. <laughs> it was so fun. It was really cute to see the look of shock on his face when, <clears throat> when he realized she was at the door. It was fun. So we went with them to um, the petting zoo and his little sister and his dad came along. We went to lunch and then went there and that was really fun. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see how this um, prom goes next week. So she has her dress all picked out. He's got his tux. He's getting a tux, how cute is that? And I guess he's been to a dance before, but she has never um, even thought, like it has never crossed her mind she has never really had the desire to go, but you know, she has seen her sisters go. She has two older sisters and my daughters have, have both, um, the older ones gone to dances. And I think in the back of her mind, she kind of wanted to experience that. But at the same time, she doesn't really get into the, um, she doesn't have crushes on boys or anything like that. So She's been very uh, laid back about the whole dance situation. And so it's kind of fun to see her excited about, about a dance. And so we got her a dress and I've got to order a boutonniere. I don't know if he'll be getting her a corsage. I don't know, but anyway, it's just cute. It might be the only dance she goes to and she's my youngest. So it's kind of exciting for her and for me to witness her enjoying these things. <laughs> so Fallon is a Yorkie and I love, love, love my dog so much. He's my best friend. He basically comes everywhere with me. I don't take him in a lot of places just because, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how I feel about like taking animals into public places very much. We do go to, we, I take him in obviously at the pet store and <clears throat> Places like that. I just don't usually take him when I'm going into it, like a store or whatever. But um, I take him to work with me because I work with my mom and dad at my mom and dad's house with my aunt. And so my aunt loves him. He absolutely adores my aunt. He's a little obsessed with her. Oh, that's kind of funny. Had to deal with the barking dog again. Um, anyway, so a lot of people say that they don't love their job or that no one can act honestly say that they love their job. You guys, I can. I, I really do love my job. I love working with my aunt. I love that I am able to assist my parents whenever I can. They're getting older, you know, and <clears throat> it's nice to be able to be there for them and help them when my aunt's low-key or distracted or Anyway, it's just a really nice job. I feel very spoiled and very fortunate to have the opportunity to be her caregiver because not only has it given me the ability to um, spend time with her and with my parents, it's also helped my girls. Now, so for the longest time, she would come to my house and I would watch her at my house and she was a little more mobile then. She could uh, walk by herself for the most part. And um, sorry, I've gotten my colors mixed up. 16, I put the wrong, I put the wrong color in there. No problem, just, that's right now. Sorry, got distracted. Okay, we're back in track. Um, anyway, she used to be able to come to my place and she could walk around, kind of um, get around with a little bit of assistance and those types of things. I would get her around one o'clock in the afternoon and then I'd take her home and put her to bed. So about two years ago, exactly actually, um, she had a heart attack and a stroke and she got COVID. It's the first time and only time, mind you, that she has ever had that. So she was in the hospital and um, 
she was actually doing very well. But ever since then, she's recovered for the most part. She's a little bit different than she used to be. Obviously, I think anyone who suffers a heart attack and stroke uh, has a hard time coming back completely. But she is more wheelchair bound. And so she doesn't, she's not able to walk um, much at all. Takes a few steps here and there. Um, I do on occasion do some physical therapy with her that requires her to walk. But for the most part, she is wheelchair bound. And my mom and dad's house is wheelchair accessible. My house is not. And so what we kind of decided was that I would go there and watch her. And it's actually, it was rough at first because I was in my mom's territory, you know, she and I had to kind of figure all of that out. And I think for the most part we did. I, I, I feel like it's all ironed out now, but um, I love being over at my parents' house and being able to help them, like I said, it's just really nice. And it just has worked out so well for me as a single mom because um, it's giving me flexibility with my kids, my kids' school. Um, Allison is in a high school that's different than Sydney's high school. Uh, Sydney's school is more of a charter school. She's my youngest. And <clears throat> um, their schools, both of them, are close to my mom and dad's house. And so they can just come over on their lunch break and it's that close. They can just come over on their lunch break and have lunch and I get to see them in the middle of the day, which I think helps Sydney especially because she just got back in school this year. She's been doing online school and that's helped her adjust, I think, to being out of the house. And anyway, so I feel very blessed and very fortunate that I have the job I have and I honestly would not trade it for anything a lot of people say, well, what are you going to do when your aunt's no longer around? I don't know, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. It may be irresponsible to not have some kind of plan, but I'm just trying to enjoy the time I have with her and with my parents. And it really is a blessing at this point for me to um, be able to be there with them. And I get to take the dog to work. And there's a lot of perks. <laughs> there are a lot of perks. I can wear sweats every day if I want to. And my mom's not a big fan of me wearing sweats every day. <laughs> That's an ongoing uh, conversational issue at her house. But anyway, my point is I really do love my job. And I'm so fortunate to be able to take care of, care of her. So I work the day shift. I get there in the mornings and I shower her. And my daughter, my 18-year-old, comes and takes over in the afternoon, evening, and puts her to bed. So we really have a nice... Um, a nice setup there. And my, I love that my kids have been around my aunt, so they kind of know how to not deal with her. That kind of sounds harsh, but they know how to handle situations with her because she'll be stubborn sometimes or feisty and she'll want to do things her way or whatever. And my girls will see her and know that what she's doing is going to be disastrous or whatever. And my girls will be like, no, no, you can't do that, you know. And they just handle her really well. And I just feel so happy for my girls that they've had the opportunity to understand how to interact with someone who is different, you know, who has different needs or special needs. And um, it's I've watched my girls through the years because of my aunt. Got too stuck in there. Uh, through the years, I've watched them because of my aunt. They they understand people on a more um, loving level. You know, it uh, it's kind of helped them build charity. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. I don't know if that's right, but anyway, I think you understand what I'm saying. It's just been a blessing for all of us. This is my last color, you guys. And then we're done. And then I'll show you what I typically do with my diamond painting canvas before I start working on it. Now this canvas did not come with, ooh, this has a lot of static. See how weird it is that some packages of drills have more static than others? So if it was, if it was a weather-based um, cause of the static, you would think that all of the bags would have the same amount of static in them. But then again, I think they're all manufactured in the same place. So, I don't know. I don't understand the science behind static to understand what causes it. I just do my best to get rid of it for my, for my kidding up. 
which usually results in the use of a lot of my little cut up dryer sheets, which is fine. And by the way, these dryer sheets are just your average everyday dryer sheet. Today I've got bounce. So whatever I have on hand is what goes in my little container and you don't even have to have them pre-cut, but I just find it more convenient to have them cut up. All right, so we've got all of our colors kitted up. Put this away, we don't need that now. And this is essentially what the kit looks like now. Now this is a really, um, <laughs> this is a really, this is the word I'm looking for, unofficial method of kitting up. But since it's a small diamond painting, I just thought I can use these containers like I was telling you for a long time. I don't know how I'm gonna keep them in numeric order. I have to figure that out. I usually don't even go by numeric order. I just look at the symbols and I usually have a rough idea of where a symbol is once I get used to a kit. So this one's gonna be a little tricky though because they can't all lay flat on the, on the bottom. They're stacked just because of the amount of, of them. I'll, I may eventually find a new case for these. I just love these containers. For some reason, I just do. All right, so we've got that all set up. Now I'm gonna show you what I typically what I typically do to prepare my canvas. So put those off to the side, put that off to the side. I'm gonna bring you up a little bit. Let me grab my canvas, I put it over here. Actually, I'm gonna go grab some washi tape too and I'll show you, even though it's a small canvas, I'll show you what I do with the washi tape. I'm trying to decide if I wanna use washi tape on this or release paper. Hmm. Let me see. I'll be right back. So I went and grabbed some things um, for kitting up at my diamond painting workstation, as I call it. Um, I'm in my kitchen doing this, so I just don't have a lot of room on my table in my room, in my bedroom. <clears throat> so I pulled some things. I'm just going to show you some things that I use for kitting up. Now everyone has their own way of doing this, and that's fine. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to be doing washi tape on this kit. But I will tell you that I usually keep washi tape in a kit, even if I don't use it or not. It's just something that I like to do. So here's my bin of washi tape. And I have to tell you guys, this used to be much fuller, but my kids have rated it. They like to use the washi tape for their journals and just craft projects in general. So I'm low on washi tape, but this is my assortment of washi tape right now, minus a few that I have been using in kits. So I just try to find a washi tape that will kind of show up well on the canvas because, and I'm talking about bigger canvases than this one obviously, because if you pick something that's the same as the colors on your canvas or similar, it's hard to see the washi tape and the whole point of having the washi tape is to section it off because you can't really see where the plastic is. Now this is an older kit, I guess, because it doesn't have the perforated plastic. Or maybe they're just not putting the perforated plastic on the uh, small ones, I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna try to find something that will show up well on this background, but yet I still like to have it kind of coordinate with the overall painting. So I might use something, oh, this is really, this is cute and it's a floral one. Oh, I think that'll show up. So I'm gonna pull that one and there is thinner washi tape and whiter washi tape. So you've got all kinds of washi tape. Uh, let's see. That is a fruit one. I'm gonna pick a um, thinner one and maybe that one. Those are the two that I'm gonna use for this. Okay. So put that off to the side. Now I will have, I'll do a video a little more in depth on sectioning because I like to measure them and try to be as precise as I can with the sections. But the general idea of the washi tape is to section it off and then you can pull the plastic back and cut it in the square that you have and the washi tape kind of helps you see the lines that you have created for your section. Whereas with the plastic, without the washi tape, you can't really see. Another thing I like to do, which I may end up doing with this one, <clears throat> is I like to use um, release paper. Now this is Diamond Art Club release paper. I also have Jada Gem Shop release paper that she sends with her kit that I love that release paper. 
And I used to use parchment paper. So when I first got into diamond painting, I bought these on Amazon and they were pre-cut into squares. And I think they're meant for cookies, but I liked them because they were already cut. This is generally the size I like to do in one sitting. And so it was just kind of nice to have it pre-cut. So these I've saved, obviously you can tell they've been well used, but they're, I've tried to get rid of the ones that are kind of ripped or whatever. I still use these, I love them. So anyway, when you're using um, a plastic that's not cooperating with you or some people don't prefer the perforated, you can just peel back a row at a time and use the parchment paper or release paper. So never use wax paper, never use wax paper. Um, also in my kit, so let's put my kit over here. So also in my kit, aside from all of the diamonds that will be in here, I <clears throat> like to keep my straightening or my straightener. So this is a tool that you can use to straighten your diamonds as you go. So we'll put that in there. Um, this is my garbage. So I usually put drills that I don't want to put on my diamond painting, or sometimes there's a little flex of um, resin or whatever the material is that they use to make these diamonds. There's a little flex of it that you'll run into. So I like to keep my garbage. I do that because um, I like to see on each kit how much garbage I've used, especially with companies I'm unfamiliar with. Now with Diamond Art Club, you don't usually get a lot of garbage, but I still like to keep track of it because I have found that some of the diamond paintings will have more garbage than others. And it's not like a big deal, but it's just kind of a tradition now for me to keep track of the garbage per, per diamond painting. I don't know, it's just a weird thing. Anyway, these came with wax in them. I ordered them about three years ago and I've never really liked using the containers with the wax, but I didn't want to get rid of the containers because they are rather cute. And then here is the washi that I decided to use. And here's a cover minder, just in case I need to pull the plastic back and keep it back while I'm working. I decided to go with my cute little pink hedgehog. This is kind of my go-to cover minder. I have a lot of favorite cover minders because I'm obsessed with cover minders. But this one is pink and it's a cute little hedgehog. So it's, thus, it's one of my favorites. But um, isn't she cute? She has a pink flower. Um, it's, a, it's called Pink Rose, so I wanted to go with something pink. My other pink flower is still in one of my kits that I have not kitted down. So we'll go with the hedgehog. And I think that's it for, oh, pen. <laughs> pen is kind of important. This is my collection of pens. Now these were all purchased on Amazon. I'm just gonna put that out there for you right now. <clears throat> I have more pens over at my mom and dad's house with my diamond paintings over there, but this is my stash here. So I have a lot of pens, and I think because of the print of the painting, I'm just gonna go with a floral, or with a pink. I'll also, I'm gonna use this, because that's a really pretty pink floral pen. You can see that, and Maybe I'll just do pink. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. You can tell I have a little small obsession with pens. Well, I did at one point. I haven't bought pens for quite a while, simply because I'm trying to get uh, pens from some small shops. And I'm just, I, I'm experimenting with accessories from small shops. Pens will probably be one of the last things that I experiment with because I have an overabundance of pens and I just don't, it's not something I'm in a rush to uh, run out and experiment with. But I will eventually get to the point where I get some on um, some small shops. But for now, we're just using what I bought on Amazon. So I'll stick these in my kit and I think that's pretty much everything I need for this diamond painting kit. Um, I keep this with it. Those are going to come loose, I'm afraid. Keep this with it. And oh, I always just keep the original toolkit. I don't know if I'll keep it in here. I forgot to put the wax in there, you guys. Sorry. You gotta have wax too. Um, this, these waxes did not come in a container, so I might have to grab a container for those. But that is generally a kidding up um, experience. That's what you do. So Again, this is on the smaller scale. It's got 23 colors, but that's the general idea behind Kidding Up. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to uh, get to know you and diamond paint with you. So thank you for joining me and have a great day. Bye.